guys, welcome to the channel. Today I want to give you an information download on my Starlink Generation 2 service, everything I've discovered after one month of use. I'll cover a few items like power consumption and the router's IP54 rating, but stick around to find out about an extended outage I had due to heavy rain. I was thrilled to see how many of you found my first install overview video useful to help plan your install. So I'm putting this one together to hopefully help you out a little bit more. But there's definitely one thing that I don't know. Unfortunately, I don't know when your dish is shipping. The first thing I want to cover is power and energy consumption of the Starlink Generation 2 device and how it's not really optimized yet for off-grid. As you guys know, for remote and rural customers like Starlink is intended for, the likelihood of having to be off-grid is much higher. I've measured power consumption over short and long durations over two different days, and in both cases I found that average continuous power consumption is about 40 watts. So best case scenario, if you don't have the snow melt feature on, you're consuming about a kilowatt hour a day. In a cold weather climate, you could be consuming more than three times that amount. The second thing I learned after I purchased Starlink was that Starlink is working on a mesh networking product. I have a few different use cases where a mesh network system would be ideal with a Starlink, and I was researching on the website, and in the frequently asked questions, I stumbled upon the fact that they are in fact building their own mesh network product. The third surprise is that the router is IP54 rated. If you haven't seen my first video, check that out. I go over some details on the cables and how the ends have glands on them. At first sight, I was scratching my head trying to figure out why you would ever want that. But after thinking about it some more, it makes sense in emergency applications or if you just want to set up the router on your patio in your backyard. Fourth is the performance of the Wi-Fi access point is actually really good. I set up Starlink in my front yard on battery power so that I could have a clear line of sight as I walked down the street to test the performance of the Wi-Fi access point. I was pleasantly surprised to see that I could make a call just fine at 200 feet away. So I discovered number five yesterday, and to be honest, it's quite disappointing. It's not unexpected, but it's still disappointing. In very heavy rain, I had a complete outage for over half of an hour. I was excited because I had been planning to do a speed test in the heavy rain, but then I was very quickly disappointed to come to the realization that actually the service didn't work at all in heavy rain. If you haven't seen the first video, go check that out. I talk about how I have T-Mobile 5G and Starlink, and to date, you know, I thought Starlink was fine standalone by itself, and I really didn't need the backup connection. Yesterday was the first time that it proved me wrong. Working from home, I actually relied on the T-Mobile 5G to get me through the outage. Even though I experienced a long duration outage yesterday due to heavy rain, I still can't think of any service that's better than Starlink for backup internet. Yes, there's a trade-off. So in very, very heavy rain, you might lose signal for an hour. But in the case of a hurricane, if cell phone towers are knocked out, which actually happens around here pretty often, and if you have backup power, you'll be fine with Starlink. Guys, I hope you found that information helpful. If you did, please consider hitting that subscribe button and come back and see some of the other experiments that I'm working on. Thanks.